Hello, everyone, and welcome to Creative Live. Welcome to Creative Live TV. This is our new live stream where we come to you daily, 24 7, with guests from around the world coming from their living rooms, home studios, kitchens, to mine, to yours. And we are here to entertain you, educate you, and connect you all uh, during these times where most of us are here at home. So, Super excited today to have a live photo shoot with Vanessa Joy. So before we get started, before we bring Vanessa on, I want to uh, invite you all to join in the conversation. Vanessa is going to be photographing with a brand new, just announced Canon R5. So if you ha have had your eye on that camera, you've heard the news, uh, she is a Canon Explorer of Light. So she has one and is going to show you all about how to use it today. And we are going to take questions as well. So as always, we start with where is it that you are tuning in from? I'm going to be in there in the comments chatting with you all. You can put in your questions for Vanessa about the photo shoot that we're going to be doing, the her workflow, the Lightroom processing, all of it. And uh, we will do that at the end. So we've got Vincent who is saying buenos dias. We've got here from Los Angeles, Catherine sending a huge love your way. We're sending love back your way as well. So again, tell us where you're tuning in from Mesa Verde, Colorado, and they're going to keep coming in. So once again, welcome everybody to Creative Live. Super excited to have Vanessa Joy on today. She is going to do some quick home photo sessions, and that is going to be with her two beautiful children, Felicity and Judah. And then she is going to, and she's going to be photographing with the brand new Canon R5. Then she's going to be showing you her quick workflow in order to be able to get do Lightroom mobile editing and even get to print. And we're going to take some Q&A at the end. So you all know and love Vanessa Joy. Like I said, she is a Canon Explorer of Light. She's a pro photo legend. She has been photographing as a wedding and portrait photographer for many, many years, as well as educating. If you are not one of the 20,000 people following her on her, subscribing to her YouTube channel, be sure to go subscribe today. She is so much fun to learn from. She is author of a brand new book called The Off-Camera Flash Handbook as well. So enough of the introduction. Let's bring her on. Vanessa Joy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I have to say, I have those butterflies that I used to have when we were doing this together in the studio. This is so much fun. <laughs> it is, it is. But here we are in our living rooms or your office room, or tell us where yeah. you are and tell us uh, what we're going to see today. And thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. So we are in my office, and I know this doesn't quite look like the office on this side. We did make some arrangements. It probably looks a lot like everyone's office on that side, though. <laughs> uh, we'll get to what's happening over there in a minute. But what we're going to do today, we're going to photograph my kids. Now, this is about quick home sessions. This is not necessarily about kid photography, unless, of course, that applies to you. So some caveats. Uh, my children are two and five. They might scream. They might say things like poopy, and uh, we're just going to roll with that. <laughs> I'm mostly saying this for me because um, shooting with my kids stresses me out like crazy. And I think that happens with a lot of photographers, whether it's shooting their kids or shooting their spouse or significant other or parents, family. We tend to fulfill that cliche of the cobbler whose kids have no shoes, right? I mean, we all have that kind of mentality or situation. And, you know, the most we do is we take out our iPhone and take some pictures and then we just let them die there. So what we're going to do today, we are going to shoot, we are going to edit, and we are going to print in probably under 20 minutes. Now, a couple of very important things. Whenever you are shooting, particularly with kids, but even with reluctant significant others or family members, make sure that you get everything set up beforehand. Much like when I'm on a wedding shooting with clients, I'm not letting my bride and groom or my couple stand there while I'm setting up lights and testing. I'm going to go ahead and do that ahead of time. Nobody wants to sit there. They just get more frustrated or more self-conscious and impatient. So get everything set beforehand. Number two tip, 
have them doing something. Now for kids, this is, you know, we've got Play-Doh here and it'll be great, but there's a reason you want to have them doing something aside from when they're children, it's just distracting and hopefully you'll get some natural expressions. And even with adults, the last thing you want to do is like, okay, picture time, sit down and smile and look natural. It just doesn't work like that. So even for adults, having some kind of activity where they can be a little bit more relaxed, more natural, you will get candid shots that are a little bit more actually candid because you're not guiding them so much. You're just having them do something that they normally do. And then of course, overall, anytime that you are photographing at home, don't have expectations. You know, a photo shoot as a professional photographer, we tend to think in our heads, well, okay, I'm hired to do this job. I have to do this job and I have to get these images, but that's not what you're doing here. Here, you're not being hired. You don't want to have those expectations. Instead, you just want to capture what's happening. So I think I just talked myself off the ledge in photographing my kids. Um, but that's what's going to happen. When they come in here, I'm not going to even talk to you guys that much. You're just going to watch the photo shoot happen as it happens. So let's talk about all the tech now. I do have the beautiful Canon R5 here with me. I guess I'll get closer to the wide angle lens, which is every woman's dream. <laughs> uh, it's a new Canon R5. I have the battery grip attached. I have, uh, this is a Kawa Pro Gear strap. And this is one of my favorite straps that actually has my name on it. And I figured if I attached my name to the camera, Canon will let me keep it, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, I do have to send this back. I'm shooting with the 24 to 105. Now it's kind of dark in here. And this is an F4 lens, a fixed F4 lens. So I can't go any lower and let light in that way. Instead, I'll be cranking up my ISO probably to 6400 or 8 thousand in here because it's dark. I can't go lower than F4. I'm not going to use flash and I have to keep my shutter speed probably around 200th of a second or higher because I'm photographing my kids and they don't stop moving ever. So I need to be able to freeze some action that way. Uh, would you believe someone's actually calling me right now? So behind the scenes, breaking down the fourth wall, I've got headphones in and that's how I hear Kenna because we're on the phone. All right, so let's get some settings. Let's do that first. Number one, take your lens cap off. I always forget that. I'll toss that over there. All right, now I am using live view to get my exposure, but that's kind of normal for mirrorless shooters because you've got the electronic viewfinder with the exposure simulation in here. I'm primarily a DSLR shooter. I've actually been getting my exposure that way for a really long time. So, okay, let's get set. I'm going to go ahead and go to auto white balance. It's sunny outside right now, but the sun might go in and out. And the last thing I want, especially when photographing young kids is to constantly have to change my white balance in addition to some settings. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that on auto. I've found so far, at least that this camera does a pretty good job on auto white balance, at least for my taste. And after this, we're actually going to edit these photos with my Lightroom app. Uh, and some tools that I have on Lightroom. So if there's a little bit of color, you know, that I don't like, easy fix. Okay, it looks like I'm about at 8,000 ISO. And that's a good thing because everyone's talking about the ISO capabilities of this 45 megapixel camera because, you know, it's more megapixels. Does it show more noise? Now, I personally have done quite a few tests on this, but I figured why not shoot at a really high ISO here so that we can get, you know, a nice live example. Uh, I am at F4, which is good also for keeping both my kids in focus if I'm going to try to get some shots of the two of them together. And I am at 200th of a second. We're pretty good here. Just taking pictures of the Play-Doh. Can I show them this way? So they can just have a see? Kind of? No, not really? A little bit? Well, you'll be able to see. When we, uh, when we go to my phone later. But it's a pretty good exposure. Now, it's good to get the exposure simulation, but I tend to hit info and look at my histogram just to make sure that everything looks good. And this so far is pretty good. I feel safe at 200th of a second, and uh, we're gonna get started. So remember, no stress, no expectations, and 
you don't have to wait until you have perfect circumstances either. You don't have to wait until you know your house is super clean to do this. Just throw all of your crap into the corner like I did and shoot in the opposite corner, all right? So all you really need is just one little spot and a little bit of light. Now my goals, because while I'm trying to set my expectations a little bit lower, I do have some goals. I want to get a nice close-up shot of each of my kids, so just like a nice you know, head and shoulders type shot. And I want to get a couple of them together, hopefully interacting and playing with the same thing. Now, if you know anything about two and five-year-olds, you know that they don't really share very well. And actually two-year-olds don't really have the capacity to even play together, like work together a lot of times on things. So we will uh, see how that goes. Ooh, I'm a little nervous, but I think we'll be, I think we'll be okay. I'm excited to have something just to print and give to my kids because, you know, they ask me to take pictures all the time of them, you know, but it's something about having that tangible memory that means so much more. In my daughter's room, I hang up pictures that I have of her. And I know in the long run, those printed photos, that's when, that's what's going to be that last, you know, my kids and my grandkids, you know, their kids, they're not going to go searching through my phone for pictures. They might go search through my social media, which I don't post a lot of them there, but what will they have? They'll discover an old box of photos. They'll remember the photos that are hung up on the wall. And I think because everything is so digitally oriented right now, which is good. And you know, we want to share it on social media and I'm going to show you how easy that is too, but we need to remember the print because without print, we're losing not only just an art form, but we're really more than likely going to lose the actual image itself. So, and you don't have to overthink it either. You know, we're going to take some pictures. I'm going to print at least one or two of them, maybe three done. We've captured the moment. All right. What time is it? Is it, can I bring in the kids? Should I bring in the kids? Okay. I'm so nervous. Okay. I'm going to get the kids. Hey kids, Judah. Lissy. Okay. All right. Can you bring Lissy down? That would be great. I think I hear my daughter stomping down the stairs. <laughs> um, so they are on their way down. My son is finishing his lunch and uh, yeah, that'll, that'll be good. Uh, just to give you an idea of what's going to happen after this. Again, I'm not going to talk so much because we already went over our settings. Auto white balance two hundredth of a second staying at F4 and 8,000 ISO. Hey, honey bunny, come over here next to me. Come right here, come right here. This is Felicity and she loves headbands, right? Do you love headbands? You wanna say hi to everybody? Hi. Hi, what'd you do today? What camp did you go to? Summer camp. Fairy camp though, right? Yeah, so we're gonna do some things and play. Which chair do you want? You wanna just pick one? She's being so good. You're all going to think I'm a liar. Now, a lot of times when I'm shooting kids, especially, I tend to keep my camera here and just use my uh, LCD screen to take Blue pictures. Blue and pink makes purple. Blue and pink makes purple. Uh, because then I can interact with them and I'm not behind the camera. A lot of times, um, you know, with everybody, adults, kids, the second you do this, it changes their personality and what they're doing. And right now this looks too dark. So guess what, guys? I'm, uh, I'm going to go up on my ISO and we're going to go to 1280. Cool. So this is perfect. I can get some shots of Lissy while she's just doing things. What are you making there? Purple. You're making purple? Are you going to make uh, a shape? Purple. Purple's not a shape. <laughs> A pizza slice? What else do you got? Yeah? <laughs> and my daughter knows when she's on camera, so we have to just talk to her and do different things, right, Liz? Mm -hmm. You know when you're on camera? Mm -hmm. Oh, hi! I want to play with Play-Doh with you. You want to play with Play-Doh with me? That's so nice. Go ahead. What color are you going to pick? Pink? No, you're both sharing all of them. Whoa, that's a big one. 
Is that a big one? Yeah. Here comes the purple. Maybe if you smash yours together, both of you. Is that purple? Hey, Judah. Show me your... No cheese. Show me your happy face. <laughs> You're so silly. All right. So let's do this. Lissy, can you get a big purple, a big blue, big blue glob? And Judah, you have a big pink glob, right? Now the two of you, can you smash your globs together? Go ahead, smash your globs together. Like do a high five with your Play-Doh. Try it, try it. Squish them together, do a high five with your Play-Doh. One, two, three, go. Like this, watch. Squish, but squish them together. Squish them together. <laughs> there you go. Good job. Hey, Lissy, can you stand up and go next to Judah? Because I want you to get in a picture together. I want pink. You want pink? That's good. Nice job. All right. And now stand up next to him. Kind of like you're about to give him a little hug. Always play to the older one. All right, now. <laughs> no, give him a kiss. No, don't give me a kiss. <laughs> he said, oh. You're cute. All right, so, so far I have my goals. I have a picture of the two of them together. I have a picture of them separately. So now I just get to play, because we got that done pretty easily. All right, you gonna keep making some shapes? Now, in addition to getting pictures of their faces, I like to get pictures of the things that they're doing. So close-ups of their hands. Are you going to make a waffle? Look at my happy face. Your happy face? And my sad face. <laughs> mm -hmm. What's my face? You want your sad face? Hold no, on. What's my happy face? Wait one second. I got to come up here, and then I can watch your happy face. Let's do your happy face this way. Let me see it. My mad face. Your mad face? Show me your mad face. <laughs> Good job. And your sad face? <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to get some shots from above, tilting the LCD screen. I'm not getting my hands in it. You can just play. I just want to get these little hands in here. There we go. Best day can ever! You, <laughs> can you get some more pink, Lissy? Why? Because I want your hands on the table so I can see your hands. I can't see your hands. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So I think we got everything we need in just a few minutes. Good. Got little hands, got them together. I think we're ready to go edit. After I get this one shot, I want. There it is. Nice. All right, guys. So I'm going to. You do? You like it? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to pick up this table, and you guys are going to finish playing outside, okay? Sound good? Ready? I'm going to pick up the whole thing. Do you think I can do it? Do you think no. I'm strong enough? I don't think so. You don't think I'm strong enough? No? I want to play. You are. You're going to play outside. Come with me. Come with me. We're going to bring it out here <laughs> so that I can finish teaching in peace. <laughs> oh, good idea. We'll get the chairs. Okay, the kids are all done. You got your chair. Bye. <laughs> Bye. See you later. <laughs> All right. So we have our goal. I took probably a lot more pictures than I even needed. But if I ever wanted to maybe put together a wall story of this little moment, now I have a variety where I could just collage it onto the wall and have, you know, some verticals, horizontals, some close-ups, some far away, little little hands, which are the sweetest things. So even though we're just photographing little moments, 
you want to be able to tell a story with it. So I keep that in my head, even though I'm just shooting my kids. So you can probably hear him screaming because he's so happy right now. <laughs> but we're going to jump over to my desk and start working with these photos. And we're not going to let them die in the camera. So can I do that? Can I walk over? Yeah. Go cool. Here we go. We're going to go over here. All right. I feel like I'm in a cooking show. <laughs> So what I'm going to do, you guys are going to be able to see my camera uh, or my camera, my phone. And whenever you're ready, yeah, good. Cool. All right. So I'm going into my Canon Connect app. Uh, and for those of you trying to text me right now, don't worry. Do not disturb is on. Your names are not going to pop up. <laughs> and I've already connected this ahead of time. The first time that you connect your camera here, it is going to take a second or so to, to do. Don't get discouraged. Walk through the process. Uh, you'll have no problem. All right, let's go back to here. Uh, images on camera. So you want to have your camera on. And it's going to connect to the network. You have to approve it. And then it's going to connect to the camera. Now, this is the same process I actually go and do when I'm shooting uh, an engagement session or I'm shooting a um, wedding and I want to do a same day edit or a maternity session and I want to be able to just send them a couple of photos right after I leave the session. It's a great way to connect with them and a great way to just give them a little bit of social media, a little bit of teaser just until you know we can get what we need. And it's still connecting. Hold on. Oh, are you using Wi-Fi on my uh, phone, Rob? No. No? All right, let's just go on and off. We have a lot happening a lot in this phone. A lot of technical things happening here. All right. Well, now would be a good time if we have any questions to go to do that. Let's go to the easy connection guide. All right, Vanessa, while you are doing that, I want to give a bunch of shout outs to people who are tuning in online. Everyone, again, if you are joining us, whether it's on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube, but you can also join the conversation over on creativelive.com slash TV. You can click on the chat in the upper right hand corner. And uh, I'm in there chatting along with a bunch of other folks um, and wanted to give a special Special shout out to Vale Bucci, um, who is tuning in, longtime Creative Live fan, and is saying that Vanessa photographed her 10th anniversary where she wore her wedding dress at the yes, same location that she got married, uh, which is awesome. <laughs> all right, so, we are all connected here, oh, so we can pop back if you'd like. Perfect. That's great. Yeah. Um, so it was just a quick restart because we had done a million different things. So. What I have set this to, because you do have a choice in how you set the, the images to come onto your phone. I have them pulling in the large JPEGs at the large resolution. You can set it up where they are coming in just small JPEG and it's like super small, like a megabyte file. Um, but as I go through here, I'm just gonna pick some of my favorites and you can do that by just pressing select and then pick some of your absolute faves. So like. I know this one of Lissy was really cute. I love this little hand one and then her hands. And then here I got both of their hands. I'm just gonna pick all of my favorites, including Judah's kind of silly faces. Both of them love to make silly faces. Uh, I like this one of the two of them together playing. That one's hysterical with his face. And then I think I have some really cute ones also of Lissy in the very beginning. Yeah, right there. I'm not going to do too many because again, they are large. So let's just go with those eight. I'm going to go to the bottom and hit import. And these are going to save all of the images. Now, if I had selected just doing the low res, it would have been done downloading by now. <laughs> but because I'm doing high res, so you guys can see a little bit better, it's going to go to a you know, slower process, obviously downloading these images. I probably should have set this to medium JPEG or small JPEG, but what it'll do is it will save it into my phone, into my albums, and then I'm going to pull it into Lightroom. Now, personally, I'm not a 
huge fan of editing photos on my phone. I much prefer a bigger screen like this, but sometimes this is all you need. And even right away, the images are okay out of camera, but maybe you want to add your style. Maybe you want to throw them into black and white. So I'm going to go ahead and open them in Lightroom and just do a little bit of retouching. Not a lot, not even retouching. I shouldn't say that. I should say editing. Not a lot. I don't want to stylize them to the point where they don't look like kind of natural photos because then it defeats the purpose for me at least of that candid kind of look if I go overboard in the retouching. Is that in those kids? <laughs> There's that much to retouch. So I'll probably do things like balance the exposure, add a little bit of contrast, probably fix the white balance, at least to give it a little bit of consistency. And then one thing I'd like to do is I like to up the vibrance of the photos, lower the saturation ever so slightly. I like to lower the clarity a little bit, but up the sharpness. These are all just my preferences and it tends to be the way that I edit pretty much everything. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up Lightroom. I'm pretty sure I can do that while they are saving. And as you can see in Lightroom, here's a bunch of pictures that I have from, you know, different clients and maternity sessions. I literally sit in my car after these sessions and edit them. And they're not like the highest quality. So if I take this one and I zoom it in a bunch, you can tell that that's really like a low res file. It's not super, super clean, but it's more than enough for them to grab that and then just throw it onto, onto Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or wherever their favorite source is. So it's one of my favorite things to do. Uh, and you know, since we're in lockdown, there's not a lot of weddings happening right here. So it's mostly maternity sessions and newborn sessions uh, and really an engagement session. So that's pretty much what we've got on my phone right now. All right, so let's go ahead and work with the photos that we have. So what we want to do back in Lightroom is you click on the bottom right, add photos, and you add from camera roll. I'm just going to grab that first photo there of Felicity. And that's the one that we got so far. And it is, again, high res, so it's just going to take a second to go in. So that's successfully added, so I'm just going to pull it in. Now, normally, I would do all of them and wait till they all did, but it takes a second for them to to process. Now this is a high res JPEG. So we can go all the way into her little eyeball. And I was using at 4.0, I was using auto their eye detection autofocus, which is phenomenal on Canon. And that's what we got. So I set it to uh, AI servo and then their eye detection, head detection and face detection. So this looks pretty good off the bat. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my presets and I have a bunch of presets here for this um, for Lightroom. These are the same presets that I use in Lightroom as well as Capture One on my desktop. So it just depends on your style and what it is that you want. Um, bright and vibrant tends to be a favorite. Dark and moody, not really what I'm going for here. Little black and white is always fun. My personal favorites tend to be fresh and clean, which is a little bit like that light and airy, but not quite as warm. That would be a light and airy, a little bit too warm. Uh, or joyfully simple. Joyfully simple tends to be my favorite and what I typically do. Um, but I think this photo looks better with the fresh and clean because we needed to bring up a little bit more of the um, shadows in here. Then I've got a couple of other just fun ones. Toasted almond. I call it stupid green. That changes <laughs> a little bit of punchy black and white, which is kind of nice there. But let's just go ahead with uh, fresh and clean. I like that one. If you haven't used presets before in Lightroom, it's the fastest way. You can do it with any preset that you have on your desktop. You have to just make a DNG file, bring the DNG file into Lightroom, and then just save the settings into your phone, into Lightroom mobile. I promise it's really actually very simple, a little tedious, but once you get it, you'll be very happy you did. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to editing this photo right here. There's not too much I want to do. Maybe, maybe in the detail, just add a little bit to the sharpening. And honestly, I mean, you tell me guys, you can see, I don't see a lot of noise. I was shooting this. This was at 12,800. I see a little bit of noise here, but I don't think I'm going to really see it in the print. So I guess I could add a little noise reduction. 
Yeah, a little bit just to smooth it out. That looks a little bit better. Maybe right around there. Yeah, but I'm not I'm not bothered by it. I am going to go into the color and remember how I mentioned I like the vibrance up a bit and I take the saturation down. And the reason I take the saturation down is because it tends to take out the oranges. Notice when I go saturation up, it's really just the oranges and the yellows that you see. But when I go saturation down, it pulls that out. And for me, because I'm shooting in New Jersey a lot, a lot of people have what I call New Jersey skin. And I like to de-Jersey their skin. Actually, de-Jersey skin is a Lightroom brush that I have. And I usually do it with my local adjustment and then go through and, uh, you know, go over the entire thing and just paint out the jersey out of their skin. <laughs> All right, so let me go ahead and that looks pretty good to me. So let's go ahead and export this one and we'll print it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the top right corner there. Oh, just kidding, I'm not gonna go to the top right corner there. I lied. We're gonna go out of my adjustments. There we go. And now I'm gonna go into the top right corner where it has the up and we're going to export to camera roll. So it's going to render that out. Again, large JPEG file on a 45 megabyte camera might take just a second. I probably should have planned this better so you guys didn't have to see it. <laughs> All right, we're good. So now I have here, this is my Canon PIXMA printer, which you might be able to see, it might not. It is the model TS9521C. This is not a super expensive printer. It's like 150 bucks, but it's your, it's a great office printer. I just like that it came in white. <laughs> it matches, um, but it has, you know, your scanner and it prints photos and stickers and CDs probably. I don't use it for that, but I do use it for printing and shipping. Uh, and in the back tray, we have a piece of five by seven semi gloss paper loaded. So that's what we're going to do. But the nice thing about this, in addition to being able to just stick in your memory card, if you want to under here, you can print directly from your phone, which is what I'm going to do. So all you have to have is the Canon print app. So I'm going to go into my phone, hit the Canon print app, and we hit photo print. And we're going to go into recents. And there it is all the way at the bottom. Hit select. Next, uh, my print settings, I'm just going to change my paper size to five by seven. It goes with the last thing that was printed there, which was a four by six. Uh, no, I don't need to check my manual about how to set my paper. <laughs> and uh, we're going to hit print. And as that's coming up, you can see it pop up on the printer. It's just telling you processing. And please wait momentarily while it pulls that out. So we're gonna let that do that. And it's pretty fast, this printer. I'm not too, I'm really, I, honestly, I'm so excited just to see this thing print out to see what 12,800 ISO looks like in print. Because sometimes it's one thing to see it obviously on a phone, but then it's another thing to see it right here. So we get this baby to come out. Looks like I need an ink change soon which is nice, it tells you that while you're printing, because that's the only time you ever pay attention to that. And there she is. Aw. I'm looking at it before I let you guys see it, sorry. Wow, okay. Yeah, that's clean. I don't know if you wanna see it. So this is a five by seven semi-gloss print. Let me tilt it that way, you'll see a little bit better. Let me know when you got that yeah. there. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. So that was it. I mean, we did a photo shoot and then printed it, edited it, printed it. And what was that? 20 minutes. Super, super short, super fast. And that's going to be great. I'll probably end up doing this with a, a few different ones that I have on here. And then even if I just stick to like five by sevens and four by sixes, you can easily grab that right there you know, from your phone. I can put this on social media in a second and then the photos don't have to die there. And I know I'm gonna have fun with this. So your photos, your home sessions can have, you can have fun with them even though if you're still stuck at home like a lot of us are or a lot of us are again, 
find something to do. Make sure that you give your subject, whoever they are, something to do. Set up your lighting, figure out what you want to do, and just have fun with it. Don't stress out about it. You can do, you know, whatever. And then most importantly, print your photos because that's how they're going to last. I'm just going to put that right there. Oop, nice. I think that was all that I had for you guys today. I do have uh, my notes here, so I'm going to pull those up real quick just to make sure there wasn't anything I meant to tell you. Uh, I know a lot of people probably in the comments are asking about the R5, and uh, I will happily answer those questions. And I know people have opinions about explorers of light and whether we tell you things honestly, I assure you, I will happily talk about my honest experiences with this so far. What I do have for you guys right before we get to questions is a free posing guide. So if you want to go ahead and get some posing inspiration for individuals, couples, and groups, you can grab that for free at the link that you see on your screen, bit.ly forward slash pose joy or B-I-T dot Lee forward slash pose joy. And there's a ton of stuff in there. So it's good to have that inspiration when you have a little bit more going for controlled shoots versus home sessions. I wasn't going to control anything with a two and five year old. I'm not even going to kid myself there. That's for sure. I'm just going to take that off so I can let this rest. That was like displayed. This is such a nice camera. I was very fortunate to be able to play with this and the uh, R6. So any, all right, that's what I got. I see Kenna nodding, so. <laughs> all right, Vanessa. Well, first of all, thank you so much. It really is incredible to see you be able to do a photo shoot in such a short period of time, but it's not just like you said, the photo session itself, <laughs> because mm -hmm. then if the images just sit on your camera, uh, then, you know, I tend to, I, I can often be a culprit of that can be me. Uh, so can you tell us again, um, what I know a lot of people, you know, might be new to the transferring their images from camera mm -hmm. to phone. Um, so tell us again, just how that generally works. We don't have to look at it again, uh, but are you generally yeah. doing that just for certain images for a short use or tell us when you use that functionality? So you do have to have a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth enabled camera. And with Canon, the way that they do it is you connect it to the Canon connect app on your phone. And I believe that's Android or uh, iOS. So you, should be good there, Android or, or Apple device. I think, don't get me wrong, but I think their newest T7 Rebel camera even has Wi-Fi capability that you can do that with. So don't think you have to have the R5. I know the R has it, the 1DX, the R6. I believe the RP has it. There are a lot of cameras that have Wi-Fi connectivity. Now for me, I'm not downloading everything there yet. However, um, there is a server connection capability within the R5 that I haven't totally explored yet. I need to, that's on the to-do list while I have this. But for my purposes, I'm just picking my favorites. And that goes along with my entire workflow too because I do not like editing photos that much when they're not my favorites. So I send all of my editing and culling out to Freedom Edits. If you go to freedomedits.com forward slash Vanessa Joy, you actually get a free $50 to give them a try, but they are the ones who are doing all of my, my grunt work. So going through the thousands of photos of drunk people dancing and, and calling them down and, you know, getting them from raw to JPEG, uploading them to, you know, to my online galleries. I don't like doing that. I like, however, my favorite images, I love editing them. I do because those are the ones that you just, you want to look at a little bit longer. You want to tweak, you want to finalize, you want to make it exactly how you envisioned it. So those I will edit. And those are the ones that I'll tend to transfer to my phone. They're the ones that will be the preview that I give to my clients earlier just to get them excited. And I think that works whether it's a wedding or a portrait session, anything you show them that's like a, a sneak peek, a preview beforehand is just going to get them more excited. Get them more excited, they'll love your photos more, they'll buy them more. You get to feed your kids. It's a really wonderful circle. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's what I do personally. Those kids look like they could eat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do. <laughs> so um, stop eating. 
We did have a, a question from Jennifer, who is a longtime Creative Liver as well. How's it going? Uh, how do you get the presets into Lightroom Mobile? Is that something you're doing on you do on your phone, um, whether they're your presets or any other presets out there, or do you? How does that work? So presets, it can work with any presets. My presets, which you can find at presets.breatheyourpassion.com, and we'll put that up probably in the chat. I give you those DNG files. The DNG file is what you need to get your presets into Lightroom Mobile. So I include them in mine. So a lot of people that sell presets, but if you have your favorite presets on your, you know, your Lightroom, here's what you do. You pull up a photo, you apply that preset. It can, by the way, be a white photo or a black frame. It does not matter. Just a photo of any kind. You export it as a DNG file. So what it's doing is it's keeping all of the metadata in there and all of the settings there. It doesn't matter what they're doing with the photo. It just matters that those settings are there. You save that photo to your phone. You open that photo in Lightroom and hit um, go to presets and hit save settings as a preset. And then that DNG file that has all the settings is now in Lightroom. And then you're basically taking the settings from there, copying them and saving them into Lightroom Mobile. Uh, it's a convoluted way of doing it. I think with the not free app, there's actually an easier way of doing it. Uh, I tend to tell people how to do it with the free app because I find that's what most people have <laughs> of Lightroom Mobile. Uh, but if you have a Lightroom subscription, I think there's an easier way to get it to sync through Lightroom. I just actually haven't done it. I did it the hard way, <laughs> but it's do it the hard way, a... do it the hard way. And then you can teach people. Thank you for that. Good to know that it is, uh, takes those extra few steps. All right. Let's talk about the Canon R5. Cause I know you did a actual, uh, promo video for Canon as a, an, an explorer of light. So just give us, give us the highlights for folks who are out there, uh, curious. Yeah, absolutely. So the Canon R6 is the camera that I had a lot longer. I've had the Canon R5 for roughly two weeks now. We've done an entire day's worth of photo shoot with it. It was, oh my God, how hot was it? Like 97 degrees that day, except it felt like on the hit red, it feels like 102 and it was so humid and horrible. Uh, but we shot with this all day that day and then ended the eight hour day shooting video. And I went, we went through every single video setting from 8K raw to 1080, 60, and just got all that information. And you will find that on my YouTube channel soon. Right now on my YouTube channel, you can find, you know, my initial thoughts, which is really just a spec video on the R5. It was before I had it in my hands. You can find a ton on the R6 because that I did have in my hands. But my initial thoughts, uh, like most of you, I was scared about it overheating. So I'm not going to pretend I wasn't when you hear that kind of thing, you're like, oh my God, is this going to work? And the last thing you want is to feel unsafe about your gear. So through those eight hours of shooting and then ending in video, we did not have an overheat once. And we were in essentially hundred degree weather on an engagement shoot. When I first tried this, I had shot, it was 77 degree weather. I shot for an hour. I was so blown away by the autofocus. Now the autofocus tech that's in here, the deep learning tech is actually in my Canon 1D X Mark III, but for it to enable, you have to shoot in live view. Having the autofocus capability when you can use the EVF, it is mind blowing, both in the R5 and the R6. It tracks my crazy running kids with no problem at all. And for me, Focusing is, it's a rough point. You know, I think it is for a lot of people. We struggle with missing images, not being able to focus fast enough. This camera, this autofocus tech has completely just taken that fear away. And you're able to take that hurdle out and just be so much more in. Uh, the other thing I was really excited about uh, is the low light capability. So the images that came out of that, I mean, that's 12,800. Uh, we did tests all the way up to the 51,200 that it goes to in video and photo. I am wildly impressed with the, the low light capability. And a lot of people were thinking, well, would the R6 at 20 megapixels be better than the R5 at 45? Having shot both of them, I would say this one's cleaner. 
from my experience, the R5 is cleaner than the R6. But yeah, those are all my initial thoughts just so far. And I tend to think about things not in specs, but in circumstance and workflow. So the things that I care about primarily as a wedding photographer, low light capability and focusing. Those are the two things I'm fighting at every wedding, every day, every time. So, I mean, I can walk into a church that has, you know, red carpet and nothing but stained glass windows, lighting with some orange fluorescent or tungsten lights, you know, coming down and not have to worry about it anymore because I can go so high. Uh, it's also nice having the in-body stabilization. We did all our video tests handheld. Uh, so I haven't pulled them up on the screen yet, but when I do, they will be on my YouTube channel. We'll get that out at some point. So yeah, did you have any other thoughts? I'm talking to my husband here. He's the video tech. Did you have any other thoughts about the R5 shooting? I mean, aside from it looking great, I'm just a little concerned about the overheating issue. Yeah. And also the playability of the 4K files. I'm seeing a lot of YouTubers saying it's a heavy workflow Yeah. in 4K. So. I, you know, I... 4K, 8K in general, it's always going to be heavy. That was the other thing. Um, definitely investing in higher, uh, larger memory cards is, is a must. I think 512 or higher, which is which is hard to do. <laughs> but yeah, I think those are all my initial thoughts. I'm sure I'll have more at some point. <laughs> Well, I appreciate the the sentiment that it's all about how you're using the camera, not just the yeah. specs. Uh, and so, like you said, that when you said 12,800, even inside the house that you were photographing, I was like, what? Yes. <laughs> so that's really amazing. Can you talk a little bit about the uh, benefits of, you know, for people mirrorless versus non-mirrorless and how that's helped you or such? Oh, that's such a big fight. Can I do we want to go there? <laughs> So mirrorless versus DSLR. So I shoot both. I have my 1DX3 that I still shoot weddings with and jobs with. My mirrorless camera, the R, the one I actually have versus this one that's on loan. Um, I shoot most of my portrait settings with that. I will say I have been enjoying mirrorless more and more, not only as I got used to it, but for the lenses. The 28 to 72.0 lens is phenomenal. I can go get it real quick if you don't mind looking at an empty screen for a second. But this lens is, it's crazy. It is, you can do bicep curls with this. It is so heavy. Um, but it's a 28 to 72.0. So what's been happening is all I take with me is this lens and my 135, which is an EF lens, but with the adapter on it. And that's all I take with me on most of my shoots. So my bag has drastically lightened because this camera, I mean, it's a little bit lighter than my 1DX3 with the, you know, once I have the battery pack on here, but not like a ton. So I'm not going to say that, you know, mirrorless cameras are so much lighter necessarily, but the biggest thing other than the lenses is just the advanced focusing system. So I find myself shooting with my 1DX3 in live view a lot because I want that focusing tech, which you can only get in live view with the eye detection. Uh, for pet photographers, this has animal eye detection too, so that's nice. So I, I'm a hybrid shooter right now. I shoot both because that 1DX3 has a better weather sealing. And if I'm shooting a wedding, I shoot in the rain, in the sleet, in the snow. I, I need that weather sealing. The R5 has about the weather sealing of the 5D Mark IV, if you were going to compare it. And the R6 has about the weather sealing, I think, of the, the 60 or the 60D. Now I'm drawing a blank on which. But it's just not what the 1DX3 gives you. So there's security in my 1DX3 with that uh, and comfort in shooting with this. So, yeah, I still do both. Can't, you can't make me give up my cameras. <laughs> and we don't have to, Vanessa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one they're going to take from me. <laughs> oh, right. That's true. That's true. Yeah, um, it's okay. Well, I'll buy it. I just want to say thank you so, so much for doing this. We have uh, comments coming in. Mary Jo oh. saying, I'm amazed at how many Im images you had taken in such a short amount of time. And super helpful, as she can tell, with the eye detection for sure. I'm personally amazed at how sharp those images are and how you can see that, you know, just looking on your iPhone and doing those quick edits and then printing. Uh, I still have not... I have not, I don't have a printer at home. 
and and I appreciate that you have, you know, like you said, one that's just over a hundred dollars um, versus thinking about, you know, investing in the thousand dollar printer or what have you, um, and that you yeah. can, you know, that you can get those that that those prints um, is super awesome. So Vanessa, I know you mentioned your presets um, and you mentioned your YouTube channel. So um, this is just a short session today, but like you said, you have so much education that you put out there. So. Tell us about where people can find you, follow you, uh, what kind of things you do on YouTube. And then um, I know that after we end today's show, um, we're going to show a little bit more about um, those presets, automation tools, and such that you have created for people. Yeah. So you can find me personally on Instagram. I always say that's where I hang out the most. And then YouTube is, we've been going at it for eight months now. So eight months and we're 21,000 strong, which is pretty great on there. You can see, you know, breakdowns of gear and how I use it. We have live photo shoots, you know, actual clients, not just ones that we put together, you know, we'll have a video person sneak on to engagement sessions so you can see what it's really like versus me just setting it up. And uh, just today I released a video um, kind of incriminating myself. I told a lot of war stories when it came to weddings, some of them which did not paint me in the best light, <laughs> but I figured why not. So those are the two places uh, you can find me. And if you want to keep up with all the rest of the stuff I have going on, see there was the sun, you can go ahead and download that posing guide because that will sign you up for my email list. And I always have good stories to share. I'll keep you up to date with content. Not a lot. I probably email you after the initial emails, maybe twice a month. Um, but it just gives you a lot of free information, what's going on. And then, of course, any Canon news, I'm good to come to for anything Canon because I do get to have my hands on things before a lot of people do. So, yeah, that's where you can find me. Awesome. And tell us uh, again about the um, what we're about to see in terms of your oh. presets and automation tools because it's not just presets. It's not, you know, presets, I, I'm actually not a huge fan of presets in general, but um, they're production tools more. So they're tools that help you go through your entire workflow, whether it's Capture One or Lightroom and do the things that you have to do like white balance and corrections or adding film grain or dealing with contrast saturation, but it helps you do them much faster because we still have to use all those sliders but I found a way where you don't have to use the sliders. And then in addition, I have an entire pack that's dedicated to being able to retouch right in Lightroom, which is my favorite thing because then I don't have to open up Photoshop and deal with that. I can lightly retouch and do the things like get rid of the under eye circles, maybe saturate the eyes a little bit, get rid of wrinkles or you know shine the hair, saturate the lips, whatever it is. Um, but you can do that right in Lightroom. So. It's a complete workflow from start to finish. And it does include presets or styles. Uh, those are the thing you'll probably use the least, to be honest. You'll probably find your favorite one that fits the style of your photography. You'll stick to that and you'll stick to one black and white style, but the rest of it you'll use all the time. Awesome. Well, once again, thank you guys, everyone, for tuning in from all over the world. Thank you to Dehuana, Jennifer, Genevish, Umberto, Che. Uh, we've got Erica. We have, let's see, so many folks coming in. Jason, uh, again, from all over. And thank you again to Vanessa Joy. You can check out what is coming up next on Creative Live TV by going to creativelive.com slash TV if you're watching on social right now. And you can see the upcoming uh, shows coming to you live. We will be back again tomorrow. So thank you again to Vanessa and to Rob uh, for um, putting all of the tech together there on your end. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Vanessa Joy here, and I'm proud to announce my very own presets and productivity tools. I have 15 new presets for you for both Lightroom and Capture One, 
but I didn't stop there. I've created 30 production tools, meaning you don't have to go up and down on sliders anymore. You have stackable buttons to control things like exposure, shadow sharpening, and even adding film grain. I've also created 30 local adjustment brushes to help with fine tuning. You can easily add gradients, creating a nice blue sky, enhancing a magenta sunset, or adding sun flare to your photos. I've designed all of these to give your photos that extra wow as quickly and as easily as possible. The local adjustments also let you retouch somebody's face on the spot without ever having to touch Photoshop. I even have my very special tool that I call D-Jersey Skin gets rid of fake tans on anyone. The 15 styles, 30 brushes, and 30 stackable production tools are all sold separately, so you can grab whatever you need. But if you grab them together, I've got a great deal for you down below. Go ahead and use the sliders on all the different images below and even some of the brushes as well. The styles include four black and whites, including a warm and a sepia, bright and vibrant, crazy colorful, dark and moody, Fresh and clean, gray day, joyfully simple, light and airy, make it pink, pastel and paisley, toasted almond, and stupid green. I'd love for you to grab all three packs and see what a difference it makes in your photography and workflow. Thanks so much for your support. I'm Vanessa Joyce.